Hello and welcome back guys. This is episode three. So tell you what, let us jump right into this painting because I'm gonna promise you this video is not gonna be nearly as long as episode two. So I'm gonna try to keep the episodes from this point on to about 30 minutes. All right guys, so today we're gonna to talk a little bit of adding some of the um, shadowing and shadows and stuff in our this part here, which is gonna be our uh, foreground. So we're going to go backwards, we're going to add a little bit of shadows in here, we'll add a little bit of white to it to really make it pop and all that fun stuff. And then next point is we'll go up here and we'll, we'll tackle that later on. All right, so let's jump right into it because I know we don't have a lot of time here, guys. All right, so I'm just going to start off by just kind of getting the brushes ready to go. Just dipped in a little bit of linseed oil. So we're going to start off with some of that, you know what, we're going to add just a touch, just a touch of that Persian blue. When I say a touch, I mean literally, I mean, it's just barely a touch. All right, so we're gonna go back. We're gonna use this as kind of like our highlight reel of where we're gonna put all of our shadows and stuff. So I know we kind of want the uh, the clouds to really pop out. So, you know, we're gonna add a little bit of darkness down here in the bottom here, and it will kind of go up a little bit. Then we're gonna add a little bit here in the back. So. Okay, so now we're gonna go back. We're gonna add a little bit. So I've used a little bit of a darker neutral gray. Um, if you're using Williamsburg paint, it's their neutral gray N6. It's their darkest of their uh, neutral grays and stuff. And we're gonna thin it out really well here. And then we're gonna go back and we will use this. We're going to mix it in right with that blue right on our canvas here. And then if you notice, I use a very short, abrupt brush stroke, which kind of gives you this feel in here. And so, I'm just going to kind of go up. And we're using very broad strokes right now. Because we're still really just blocking it in and we'll use our whites to go back and actually seal everything in and tighten everything up. So for what I want to do is I want this cloud system to kind of start on this side. I want it to give this like sweeping motion here. So keep that in mind. So our shadows aren't going to be nearly as prominent on that side of the painting. So we're just going to bring it in. Then we're going to fan it out just a little bit there. And yeah, sometimes you have to paint with your left hand to kind of get in the right move. We're going to fan that out. And as we get closer over here, we'll use this to. And I'm going to go back and use a bigger brush to kind of blend everything together here. And as you can see, because I paint so thin and you thin it out, it really just almost as like a glaze that goes over the top because you want everything to be transparent. I mean, that's the way I like to paint is all my colors are transparent. So you're actually building up layers and layers of your, layers and layers of your actual painting. So keep all that in mind. It's all about building the layers. All right, so see now we kind of have a little bit of a darker, almost like a haze, which is kind of like what we want because clouds aren't, um, well, they're, let's face it, they're basically just haze, they're just water. So we want to make sure that they stay very light, light and fluffy, like clouds should be on a beautiful summer's day, which is kind of like what we all need. So you want to keep your clouds nice and fluffy 
some light. But now don't go too fluffy because if you go too fluffy then it just looks like bags of cotton up there and well that doesn't quite look realistic either. Alrighty, so now I'm going to continue with my grays here because I want to bring out so we have a layer here and we want to do a layer behind it so we're going to basically outline that little bit of blue that we put in there before I'm just going to kind of go I can paint over it we're just going to go right up to it and that's going to give us a little bit of shadowing behind it now once you get this layer done we just simply we're just going to back brush it a little bit so we'll back brush it to get some of the paint off of there. Just back brush it just a little bit. Now, then we're going to go back and use that shorter brush stroke. And we're going to brush down toward our blue here. And that is going to create this wonderful line of dark paint that's going to be right next to our blue. our bigger brush which we're actually using as a blender brush and we're going to just repeat our short brush strokes we're going to get it down with it then we'll brush up with it then we'll even go a little bit in circles because we really just want to blend this blend this gray in because it's a beautiful transparent gray and if you remember we uh, already covered the canvas there with that titanium white so this is kind of be painted on top of it here so I'm just gonna bring that up just a little bit from our line so we still have a, little, have a little bit of our line intact, but we kind of blend everything in there. All right. is kind of approaching if you notice we already have started our shadow lines and all this stuff started to pop out we're going to have a line here a line here and a line there and then of course we've got our line over here okay. all right so i think it is time for us to grab our whites and then we're going to go back with our whites a little bit of our blue and we will start adding in some of the uh, textures and all that stuff with our clouds so we're going to clean our brushes like I said we're just going to use a little bit of paint thinner and with this since I'm kind of blending all these colors together we don't really need to get all the paint out of them because we're going to be blending them together on our canvas anyway So I wouldn't advise drinking and stuff next to your paint because, um, well, it's not the safest thing in the world, but hey, let's face it, if we uh, play everything safe, sometimes we won't, uh, won't get out of the boat, per se. Alright, so, now we're going to go back, so I think the whites I'm going to start off with, I'm going to start off with a uh, titanium white, and I'm going to use that to kind of block in, and then from there I'll build up with a uh, flake white. And then maybe a, um, um, I'm not quite sure. 
Let me look at my Y2 and we'll kind of see, because I'm trying to, I'm also thinking at the same time, um, zinc. I think I'll use a zinc white, and then I'll go back and use a, um, to kind of tie it all together, I'll go back and use the, uh, uh, a zinc white and a titanium white blend. And I think that will, I think that will really tie it all in. Or you could just buy the color, which is a cremenza white, which already is mixed in your whites together. And so, but we'll talk about whites in a completely separate episode. I'll go over whites and everything, and there's a whole bunch of them out there. All right, so we're going to start blocking in with our titanium white here. And so, and like I said, guys, if you have any questions at all, please leave it in the comments below. I will be happy to answer each and every one of them because I'm right here with you, and I feel that hey, we can all paint this together, right? We're all in it together. All right, guys. So, starting with my titanium white here. And I like thinning it down really well. And titanium is actually a really good white. It uh, holds up pretty well. It doesn't hold up as well as flake white when it comes to thinning down, but it is pretty good. All right, so how about I change the camera angle and bring you guys a little bit closer in so you can actually see what I'm doing because this is going to be a lot of using smaller brushes and all that. So why don't we change the camera angle here? Okay, guys, I kind of brought the camera in a little bit so we could see just a little bit more to kind of raise the paint up. So hopefully, as I'm working out the bottom, you guys will be able to see a little bit better. If not, let me know in the comments below, and I'll fix it for you. Okay, so now we're back. So I've got my brush loaded up with my wet titanium white. What I'm going to do is I really want to bring out this right here, right along that edge of that blue. Now, we're not going to keep this blue in. Remember, this blue is our underpainting. So we're going to use our white to kind of cover it all up, and it should hopefully tie in together. But we'll see how we shall see you. So you can kind of see how that titanium it really covers up, but at the same time it's also really translucent. So with this, we do want to bring this all the way up to our original blue line because we want to cover that up. But we're just going to use our blue as just a tint that's underneath it. Now, every once in a while you'll notice that I kind of thin my whites out again, because I like painting with it really thin. So, I'm gonna take that all the way to the line. See, I'm using that very short, abrupt brush stroke. Now, if you notice, when we go over that blue line that we did, you're gonna be left, it's still gonna be visible there. You want that because then we're gonna go back and we add in more shadows to it. That's actually gonna give it a little bit more depth there. A little bit. Of, and sometimes when you do texture paints, you add texture. Sometimes your texture will get a bit big, so sometimes you just gotta pick off the high parts. All the way down, Take it all the way down to the bottom of the canvas. So just add in a little bit more. And then do not be afraid to put more linseed oil straight onto your canvas because that will make everything wet and will help blend it a lot better on your canvas when it's wet. All right, and I think we're going to switch to a bigger brush so we can kind of blend all of it together. And as I'm using that very short abrupt brush stroke, and I'm bringing it all the way up to that original blue line that we put to mark in our original line. I hope everybody is having a good day today. And so, sometimes painting happy paintings will 
definitely change your mood on everything. All right, so now I think we're going to continue to build up our lines here by adding um, a few more whites to that. So now I'm going to go back. This is where I'm going to actually start adding in the, um, the zinc white here. And the thing about zinc white, it's going to look a lot like your titanium whites, but it's going to be a little bit more, well, you'll see. It won't be as uh, warm as your titanium whites. So if you kind of notice, it's even a little bit more translucent. It kind of adds just a wisp or a hint of the color white when painted raw right on the canvas. As you can see, it's a nice translucent cool white. And it's really great for, uh, like let's say you wanted to paint a beach scene with waves and stuff like that. The zinc white's really good to do the caps of the water with because it has that translucent, um, or I should say transparent, sorry, not translucent, but uh, has that transparency to it that really ties in really well with water and in my opinion with uh, the sky and the clouds and everything. Because that's, if you look at clouds and you really look at them, you'll see that they have lots of layers to them and a lot of transparent layers to them. And so, and with the zinc white, I personally like putting it on straight out of the tube. Sometimes I'll thin it down if I really want it to be uh, transparent, I'll thin it down. And you can see, once you thin it down a lot, it really does get transparent. And it's almost like a uh, haze or a glaze you can put over your entire painting for that. And you notice I'm still continuing with that short abrupt brush stroke and all that. Now, if you notice down here, almost all that gray we put on is now pretty much gone because it's been absorbed by the white and the whites have kind of thinned it down. But we know it's there and so now we'll go back and we will add in more of it to darken it up a little bit. But I think I'm going to use the, um, I think I'm going to use the neutral gray. This is going to use the Williamsburg N8 for it. I know that these are, these are basically were created to mix in with the paints and tint the paints, but I like using them straight on the uh, canvas. So I'm going to add in just a little bit of that to kind of keep our shadows going here. Add in a little bit more of the darker grays. Ooh, because you know what? Let's add in a little bit of darker grays here because it's almost like, since we want this to be our um, light spot, or the sun should say, why don't we put in a little bit of darker grays here to almost add in some shadows and stuff like that to where the light hasn't hit it, so it's kind of a little bit of a stormy storminess to it. So, yeah, let's do that. Let's darken this up a little bit in here. And that's the beautiful thing about abstract artwork, people, is that you can change your mind directly as you're painting it, which is kind of what I did here, but it's okay. We'll tie it together somehow, I promise. Everything you just painted. Well, sort of. Because the beautiful thing about this is, is that we're all painting with layers here. So all of this will actually end up being transparent here. So I'm going to go back and add in some of the zinc white over all of that that I just painted. But I'm going to thin the zinc white out pretty good on it. So it's just going to kind of blend it all together. Remember I told you how that little bit of blue goes a long way? Yeah, you can still see that little bit of blue that's still back there. All right, now, let's 
go back with our titanium white here to really just add in to add in some highlights really quick. Don't be afraid to thin it down. All right. So there's our titanium white. It's gonna thin everything down for us. And then the good thing about when you paint wet, you can just mix it all in there and then go back and just brush it back. that short abrupt brush stroke and it's really just going to fade everything in together. Now the cool thing about this also is that remember we have all those layers underneath so if you really push down with your brush you can like almost pull up this layer and you kind of see how it pulls that layer off from underneath it so keep that in mind which I think that's what we'll end up doing like right here on the edges push down really hard and it brings up those layers that are underneath then you just gently go back, just gently brush it up. So it just brings it forward. You want to do that all throughout your painting here. You just want to gently brush off the excess here. All right, so now we'll clean our brushes again. It's a lot of cleaning the brushes. A lot of cleaning the brushes. So you know what we'll do? Now we're going to add in some flake white. Now the flake white is going to be really a powerful white. It is it's pretty powerful. It will cover up pretty much anything you put on it. So we will put in some of the flake white here. As you can see, always thin up. Why don't we start? Um, how about here? So we've kind of got like this action going on here, but we want to just simply kind of liven it up just a little bit there. And we're using a very gentle but very short abrupt brush stroke. So, which me personally, um, I'm pretty well uh, inspired pretty heavily, like every other artist out there, by Van Gogh and his brush stroke. And so, I like this brush stroke. A lot, a lot of people don't. They think it's heavy handed, but I like it. kind of tying all of our layers together here. You know, it's funny. When I was in art college and stuff like that, and then when I apprenticed and all that fun stuff about becoming an artist, yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. Um, people would ask me, hey, what kind of artist do you want to grow up to be? You know what? I thought about it for a while, and uh, it's, not a very, it's not a very easy answer to say, so I was like, you know what? I would like to have the passion of Van Gogh. The, I guess it would say the, I guess the ego, not necessarily the ego, but the confidence of Picasso and the skill and patience of Monet. And after I put all that together, I was like, you know what? Nah, scratch that. I want to be my own artist. So that's what you have to go by. Don't go by what other people want you to be. Go by what you want to be. It's okay to have inspirations and things like that, but don't don't inspire to be anybody else. Inspire to be your own person, your own artist. And if you like your painting, it doesn't really matter what the art critics say. Because trust me, if you paint something, there's going to be an art critic who doesn't like it. There's going to be an art critic who, do, who does like it. So, 
So don't worry about it. And when people try to put you in boxes, ha! Be like, man, I can't even find the box. What are you talking about? So, all right. So I'm using my flake white here, and I'm thinning it down pretty good here. As you can see, that flake white really is like tying everything in together here. So we're just going to keep right on in and tying it right on in there. And, we're gonna, and every once in a while we can pull up our grays and we can kind of pull it up and we can brush it out and kind of add in more shadows to it. And then we just take our flake white and we just kind of dance around, dance around our darker colors. And then we kind of blend it in together. Now, what's great about that is that if you notice it kind of adds in texture and lights and all that. It kind of does the work for you. So, but every once in a while you just have to gently brush it out and Sometimes you have to be patient. Patience is a must when it comes to painting. All right, so if you notice here, we got like this cool little line here. I mean, it's very cool. I like the line, but the problem is we have the same line up above it, which is even cooler. So it's not really tying everything in together like we want it to. So sadly, however, this line is gonna have to go away. I'm gonna miss that line. You're gonna miss that line, but it's okay because this line's better. And it's like with life, sometimes you have to prune certain branches off so the tree lives. So it's okay. All right, so there goes our line. Bye-bye line. And look at that. Something even cooler appears just by doing that. So. Here we got some here, so you know what, let's kind of bring in this shadow here a little bit so we can accent some movement in here. Because to me, I love movements in paintings. So we're just gonna bring it up, kind of move it up just a little bit there. And so see, so now we've kind of got all this stuff blended in and we will go back and we will add much more textures and things like that in episode Four, because I do believe we are now at our time limit for this episode. So I want to say thank you guys. Here, let me adjust the camera. There we go. So, oh, up just a little bit. There we go. All right, guys, I want to say thank you so much for joining me in on this uh, episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer any question you might have. So uh, much love, and I will see you guys on episode four.